welcome to my views and news viewers this week i did a video about amhara fano fighters capabilities whether they can reach addis ababa ethiopian capital or not after that i received lots of messages of phone calls emails uh, people from all sides contacted me uh, some people close to fano shared their input people from oromia uh, from tegray they shared their views about uh, fano's capabilities i received uh, uh, new insight into how fano wants to achieve its objectives why does fano fight why does fano believe that it can remove the government whether by reaching gadis ababa ethiopian capital or not but obviously target is the government federal government ethiopian pm abi should be removed according to fano there are five main points which i understood uh, which are the foundation of fano's fight based on these five points fano fighters believe they have a chance they can remove the government they can install the government of their choice which five plans which five points i'm not talking about ways and means i'm talking about five uh, uh points which according to fano are sufficient enough to prove that fano has a real chance of removing the existing federal government and installing a new government firstly they are relying on precedents they say bale zalake fought he had a few fighters he was an ordinary ethiopian military commander he fought against italians he was based in gajam we know that balazalake is a legendary ethiopian military commander who fought against uh, italians and uh, uh, he started uh, by launching small scale attacks ambush etc like fano fighters are doing and gradually he became pain in the ass or pain in the side of uh, italians and his movement resistance movement spread from gojum to shoa volo so bale zalake resistance movement is a precedent for them first precedent second precedent they believe is what ihapa did ethiopian a people's Revol- revolutionary party EPRP was formed in 1970s uh, i think it's the first uh, political party modern political party which fought against feudalism against monarchy uh, the party struggled against heli selasi against uh, mangisto elmarium uh, and the party workers fought against red terror of mangisto elmarium uh they launched white terror you, they, their activities are called white terror though their struggle did not succeed we saw clash between uh, ihapa and uh, tplf later tplf and eplf jointly removed mangisto so for these fano fighters ihapa struggle is also uh, a precedent two precedents they believed that in ethiopian history uh the way uh, that in ethiopian history two uh, precedents are there when such resistance movements were launched like the one which is being uh, launched in the amhara region so they believe that they they won't repeat repeat past mistakes like ihapa split it could not stay united ultimately the movement uh, became uh, insignificant 
So, they are first relying on precedents that uh, there is history of such struggles. Secondly, they believe that Ethiopian National Defense Force sooner or later is going to disintegrate. They believe that uh, Amhara members of Ethiopian National Defense Force gradually they'll defect. They'll join Fano factions. They say that already Amhara Special Force members, former Amhara Special Force members, some ENDF members have joined Fano fighters. Large number of ASF members have joined Fano fighters and they say that if this war goes on, uh, ENDF will not fire at Amhara people and uh, we could see Amhara members of Ethiopian National Defense Force defect. They'll join uh, Fano uh, factions and ENDF won't be able to stay united. Now, we can analyze uh, these points of uh, the FANO's uh, plan. Uh, is ENDF going to split or not? But in this video, just a look at what they are saying. What are their plans? So, secondly, relying on likely ENDF disintegration. By the way, Tigray kept on claiming that ENDF was uh, no more uh, an army. It uh, had been considerably weakened. Still, we saw that fight went on. ENDF and EDF ultimately uh, forced uh, Tigray fighters to lay down arms. Uh, not small arms though. Tigray fighters still armed with small weapons. Second point, ENDF is going to disintegrate, not in coming days, but if this war goes on, Fano fighters believe ENDF won't be able to stay united. Thirdly, government, PMRB's government. The point number three of this plan, which is about uh, government's uh, strength, It is about how strong the government is and uh, the Fano faction believe government is weak. The PMRB's government is very weak. It cannot withstand a big rally of uh, less than a million people. And they say that uh, when the church called for nationwide protests, this year, at the start of this year, Ethiopian government uh, begged the church. It rather uh, uh, withdrew from its position. It was supporting, the government was supporting an Romia region based Orthodox faction. But after church called for nationwide protests, the Ethiopian government uh, gave in. It then became a mediator. It was a supporter of the Romia faction. It wanted to split the church. It wanted to divide the church. But when it saw that church was united, that uh, tens of thousands of people were taken to the streets against the government, government immediately backed down, changed its position and showed as if it was a mediator. PM Abi and his... Uh, Ministers went to church headquarters in Addis Ababa and they mediated an agreement between the breakaway faction and the main church. So they say government is weak. It cannot uh, counter public pressure. If uh, tens of thousands of people decide to take to the streets, government will collapse, especially in Addis Ababa, Ethiopian capital. If people are charged, if they're mobilized, if they're motivated and they decide to take to the streets, government won't be able to control the situation. It will collapse. Again, I am not analyzing what Fano's uh, uh, ideas are. I'm just sharing with you uh, what they think. Fourthly, allies. These Fano factions believe that sooner or later they'll find allies. Though so far they have no allies. We know that Fano alone 
Amhara hardliners alone, they want allies inside and outside Ethiopia. Outside, obviously, they want their neighbor, Eritrean, Eritrean military to support them. Eritrea, we don't have any uh, uh, solid evidence, evidence that Eritrea is part of this uh, insurgency supporting Fano fight. But they believe that uh, gradually, when government will be weakened, they could find allies. In Ethiopia, they are hoping to get allies from the Somal region, maybe from Afar too, and from Sidama and some other parts. Obviously not from Tigray, not from Romeo too. Again, uh, what they are hoping, so far it's not on the ground, it's not happening. No one is pledging support for Fano fighters, at least openly. They are on their own, but they believe gradually they will find allies. Fifthly, Oromia. I said Oromia is between Addis Ababa and Amhara. Oromia will confront Fano fighters. Here they say that uh, Fano will have support from Oromia too, because Amharas live in Oromia. Millions of Amharas live in Oromia, especially in border areas. In Velaga Amharas live, in Shoa Amharas live. And Oromia will never be united if this uh, a conflict, if, if this insurgency in Amhara region goes on and it becomes a threat to Addis Ababa, Oromia will split. It's not that Ola, Jawar, Abi, uh, and all will be united. They'll split. They say historically Oromia never uh, remained united. On key issues, national level issues, Oromia always split. That has been the main weakness of this region. Largest region, largest ethnic group, but split, not united. So these are uh, five main points and they believe that PM Abi, his government is going to be weakened and PM Abi is going to start some adventure in coming months if his government is weakened. He might try to start some wars, war against a neighboring country just to get support from Ethiopians, to deviate people's attention from what is happening in Amhara, to put Amhara groups in a difficult position that will they support the war or not. So they think that PM Abi could wage war on Eritrea claiming that Asab should be a part of the part of Ethiopia. Ethiopia should have, should have access to Asab. So that is what they believe. They think they have a real chance. And uh, they don't want to reach Addis Ababa. They believe that uh, they can achieve their targets by being in the Amhara region too. And the core of their strategy, which we'll discuss in coming videos, is based on assassinations. They want to kill top people on city level, regional level, federal government level. And I think assassinations happened during Balazelika's struggle too. So, so that is our assassination starting. We're seeing that assassinations in Gojam, in North Shore, in other parts of Amhara as well. Assassinations will increase in coming days. It is one of the key points of Fano's struggle. It's not a secret. Uh, if you talk to them, they clearly say that uh, 
those who are opposing Fano's operations, th those who are opposing Fano, those who are supporting operations against Fano, they'll not be tolerated. Fano will neutralize them. Now, in some future videos, we'll try to analyze all these five points. I just shared with you how they think. Because people criticize, people say that Fano fighters don't have any chance to reach Addis Ababa to remove the government. That is what they think. They believe they, they, they can remove the government, they can remove the PM, they can have government or PM of their choice. Uh, we'll try to do videos on negotiations, on Fano's means of uh, resistance movement and on how to counter Fano as well because we are speaking mostly from Fano's perspective. What about uh, Ethiopian government's perspective? What, is, uh, what does the government think about Fano? And is government strategy uh, failing? And does government have any other options to control the situation in Amharic? We will analyze in coming videos. Thank you for watching.